Now that we understand what the air is doing in these highs and low pressures, let's look and see what type of weather these different fronts bring us. If we had cold air, and that cold air was moving across the ground in this direction, cold air is dense, it's more heavy, so if the cold air was moving faster than the warm air, that cold air will sort of slide up underneath that warmer air. And you may ask, well, why don't the two just mix together? Um, it's kind of like oil and water, where the densities are so different that each air mass tends to hold its same properties as it moves across the surface. So the cold air, it tends to kind of slide up underneath that warm air. And which air temperature carries more moisture is warm air. Warm air can hold more moisture because the air is expanded, so there's more place to fit water molecules in there. So if we take this cold air and we shove it underneath the warm air and kind of snow plow that warm air up, the type of weather that usually occurs is thunderstorms. And how uh, bad the thunderstorms are has a lot to do with how much moisture is present and how fast the cold front is moving and also the temperatures that exist in the atmosphere as this occurs. If the cold front moves very, very quickly, let's say, for example, if we look at a little picture of the United States, and you saw that there was a cold front approaching from the west, but it took three days to get to our area, then the storms are probably not as bad. But if that cold front reached us within you know, 12 to 24 hours, then that cold front is moving very, very quickly, the slant of this cold front tends to be a little steeper. So instead of being a slant like this, if the front was moving slow, then your slant is a lot more shallow. If the cold front is moving quickly, then the slant can be a lot more steep, like this, for example. And if you have this cold air just rushing through, uh, rushing across the ground, it sets up a shock wave, almost like when you throw a pebble in the water and the water ripples. So as this air pushes, it'll have a lifting force and another lifting force and another lifting force and so on. And in this area right here, because the air has, is warm air and it has more moisture, you're likely to get large, large thunderstorms. And the, the line of thunderstorms that uh, is created in front of this original front line, they call a squall line. So how that might look on your chart is you might see a cold front line and then they'll show radar where some storms are and this will be your aerial view and then in front of these storms then you may see a whole nother line of thunderstorms and this was very very dangerous these are the most severe storms or when they call them squall line thunderstorms and they say that they're a non-frontal band of thunderstorms because the original storms that were associated with the front line are right here and this is just another set of thunderstorms that was produced from usually a fast-moving cold front. How they would show this on the chart by symbology is they would draw a line, dot, dot, line, dot, dot, something like that. Okay. So a cold front usually produces thunderstorms. Let's look and see what happens with warm air. If you had warm air, the warm air tends to rise up above the cold air because it is thinner, less dense. And if the uh, ground was here, and that's the direction that the air is moving in, if the warm front was catching up with the colder air, it tends to slide up above it. So I still end up with some clouds because I'm cooling I'm adding moisture or I'm cooling that moist air in this area, but because I have cold air here at the surface, there's no reason for it to rise because there's already warm air above it. So what happens is you, you would usually get um, clouds and precipitation, but it would stay close to the surface. And that's usually those times when the, um, the, the day is drizzly, rainy, low clouds for maybe a day or two. That's usually with an approaching warm front. So a cold front brings thunderstorms. 
in a warm front brings low clouds and visibility, uh, more stable air because there's not a lot of lifting force, but usually poor visibility at the surface. And then the last front um, would be the, uh, an occluded front. And an occluded front is, this is the direction of motion, is when we had cold air that was catching up to warm air that was catching up to cold air. So now we have all three temperatures kind of merging in there together. And the type of weather that this would produce is a combination of these two. So you would have some low drizzly rain and stratus type clouds, but hidden in there you might have some thunderstorms. And if you were just flying along in IMC, Instrument Meteorological Conditions, then you may suddenly find yourself in a thunderstorm if you didn't have radar. Um, what they call those are embedded thunderstorms. So an occluded front is typically more dangerous because you have both scenarios of thunderstorms and low, obscur uh, low obscurations and the thunderstorms are embedded in those, uh, those low clouds.